Hello everyone. Welcome. Welcome back to Insect Pests of Crops lecture series. Since previous class under the lecture three, we started discussion on the pests of maize. In the previous lecture, we discussed on borer pests of maize. In fact, we discussed three major pests of no, maize, which acts as borers. One is shoot fly, second one is chylopartilus and sesamia inference. So in this class, we'll be concentrating on the defoliator pests of maize. In fact, there are two major defoliator pests which occurs on maize and other cereal crops. One is oriental armyworm, and which is called scientifically Mythimna separata. And the another one is recently invaded pest, fall armyworm, Spodoptera rugiparda. There's yes, a lot of things has to be discussed. Now, these two are major pests distributed in many parts of the world. So I'll be restricting my discussion on only one pest in this class. Under the lecture 3B1, I'll be concentrating on the oriental armyworm, Mythimna separata. So this Mythimna separata belongs to family Noctuidae of Lepidoptera and has got again wide host range. Maybe rice, maize, or gum, wheat, many millets, and even it breeds on various wild grasses. This species is in fact called oriental armyworm because it is mainly distributed in the oriental region. Okay, so includes India, China, okay, Southeast Asian countries, which is called oriental region, but now it is also you now migrated and you now found you now in serious you now incidents, even in Australia and New Zealand. Okay, so this is the these are only countries where this insect is actually causing you no know, serious losses. You can see here how, how the insect becomes, in fact, become very problematic to farmers. You can see you now within a span of say you know, one week to 10 days, you can see the complete defoliation, leaving only the main stem and midrib. Okay, in case of maize or any other crop, in fact, the yield is you now directly proportional to the photosynthetic rate. Okay, if it is completely defoliated, what you now yield we can expect out of these type of plants? Okay, that much serious it becomes. Okay, so this has happened in the year 2017 in Karnataka and many parts of southern states. And it became a you know, national news and there was a wide you know, media coverage as well. Like you can see here, Karnataka declares war against army war. Okay, this is mainly attributed to you now Maithimna separata damage. Armyworms attack crops in Bellary district. You can see the defoliation. Okay, so armyworms destroy millets crops in 15,000 hectare in district. Okay, in Davangere. Okay, Ankege Sigada Saini Kauluvina Bade. It has happened in Davangere district of Karnataka. So, like that, you know, it becomes very problematic. And this insect, you know, very problematic, especially in the outbreak years. Otherwise, you know, very meager population is maintained in other years. Okay, you can see in Iriuru, one of the you now place in Karnataka again, there was a very you know, huge incidence causing complete defoliation in case of maize. And you can see even on ragi, maize. Okay, literally, you know, farmers can collect thousands of larvae, that much larvae they can you know, find out in their field, so leading to very high defoliation. Okay, this insect is commonly called oriental armyworm, as I said. So, but I know it's got a lot of other names. Southern army worm, sorghum army worm, whenever the you know, sorghum area is large, attacks large area of sorghum. Army caterpillar, as they are found, you know, like this photograph, large number of larvae are found. Ear red cutting caterpillar, they attacks you no know, panically as well, ear it as well. That's how it has earned the name ear cutting caterpillar. Paddy army worm, okay, it attacks, attacks paddy as well. Okay, so it has got a lot of common name, this might not separate. So, in fact, affects the economies of both farmers and the nation because. No, only the few plots are not interested. It, the, wherever, whenever the outbreak occurs, large area, so entire state maybe, okay, so entire southern you know, states of India may get attacked. Now, and that too, it has got a lot of wide host range as a result of it affects the not only farmers' economy but national economy as well. So, actually, it causes damage that much damage. Larvae feeds on tender leaves in the central leaf portal of the plant, okay. And as they grow, they feed on tender leaves, older leaves, and also feed on ear aids, like this, you can see here. Okay, so complete defoliation and the, uh, attacks the economical part of the plant as well, and that is causing a lot of you know, damage. So if drought conditions follow an outbreak, okay, plants are unlikely to recover from defoliation. Okay, sometimes what happens if there is a good moisture in the soil, there is a chance of, you know, you know, again, recovery from the feeding damage. If the farmers actually manage that pest, if there is no recurrence of the pest, 
for chance of you no know, <coughs> recovery is possible and they may get farmers may get at least you no know, uh, you know, to yield but okay what happens many times if drought condition happens after the you no know, damage so the plants do not recover at all that's why it becomes very problematic farmers may not be able to replant for various seasons so sometimes they may you now flow the land and again they can go for you no know, sowing but there are a lot of other problems arises to the farmers under that condition so there might may not be a you no know, good you no know, seed availability cost of buying replacement seed again he has to purchase so you know this has to adds to cost of cultivation and they may lose the season insufficient rain may happen in the later part of the season so that all leads to you no know, total loss it's so coming to biology of this insect so adult can lay 400 to 1300 eggs in fact there are instances that that it can lay up to 3000 eggs okay more than more than 2000 eggs and x now may take about 5 to 6 days for hatching incubation period is 5 to 6 days and it can undergo flower six larval instars okay and pupation occurs in soil so it can complete 8 to 10 10 generations per year because from egg to adult it takes about 30 to 35 days so that's how it completes the life cycle coming to identification feature of larvae and adult it is very important because there are number of army worms which attack our crops and there are various pet worms okay they look similar that's why you need to identify you know the larva as well as the adult so that we can take you no know, proper decision in order to manage the insect in case of larvae so in fact larvae is actually very fleshy and we can find a median patch you can see in the dorsal region there is the one intermediate middle one in fact light colored dorsal stripe you can see this one and there are two wide black brown stripes you can see here yeah so the, there are two stripes in the lateral region and there is a one dorsal stripe and again in the lateral region if you see from the lateral side you can find a black brown lateral stripe just above this particular line you can find this stripe okay of course there are number of you no know, color marks but with these you no know, stripes which are found in the dorsal region as well as lateral region we can identify the larvae of vicuna separata and adult can be identified with these four wings which are you now light brown colored and you can see typically you will find a you now four wing which are gray yellow with a dark gray or reddish yellow is tinge okay so light yellow is colored four wings but there are you can see here there are two spots one is called round spot another is called reni farrow spot you can see here, there are two spots here which are light yellow is color you can see compared to the yellowishness of these four wings you can see a little more darker no two yellow spots okay without any you no know, distinct black color or edge okay so there will not be any much you no know, differentiation between this yellow color and the four wing yellow color whereas this reniform spot this one has got a white point you can see here at the lower margin okay so with these two spots and typically light yellowish colored or gray yellow colored four wings you can identify and the hind wings you can see here it's comparatively creamy colored whereas it has got darker margin okay so towards the uh, margin it has got the dark area so that's how we can identify you can see typically here also you can see these these now the uh, yellow spots that's how we can identify the adult of mytilna separata coming to reasons for out by what happens when when actually this outbreak up happens in fact prior to 1950 it was not a no major pest it was considered as a minor pest in india after that okay there was a no report of sporadic outbreak in many places of india okay so in some years it was found in a very serious manner in the last two decades you now consider after now 2000 or so extensive damage has been reported over 25 places in different parts of india okay outbreak at other locations have been recorded during 1980 81 at darwad and at anandpur and nandyal during 1981 so during those outbreak years Okay, it becomes very problematic. Otherwise, as I was telling, very meager population is maintained. So even in 1983, you can find the very serious incidents in Kullu, in Maine especially. Again, in 1977, Hyderabad. Okay, in Andhra Pradesh, there was a very huge incidents on millet crops. Okay, in total, if you see the okay last hundred years data, for example, a total of 16 serious outbreaks have been reported in India since 1924. Okay, okay. So what that means every five year or every ten years or so. not in a cycle not in a cyclical manner but okay with some reasons in fact we have found a very serious outbreak in some years okay so what are the major reasons in fact 
the outbreaks in india china japan bangladesh new zealand fiji australia have been attributed to what are the reasons the occurrence of heavy rains following drought for years okay there are there is a drought for about 5 to 6 years some there will be heavy rain after that okay with the flood resulting from heavy rainfall under that condition under that no ecological no congenial conditions this impact has lead has gone to the outbreak and become very problematic so increase in irrigated area and any fertilizer use other reasons introduction of yielding varieties and continuous cultivation okay of course one of the other topic will be there induction of migrant population into a geographic area so what may be the trigger although lot of not much or oh, ecological research has been targeted on this insect because of non availability of insect we don't know when actually we'll find very large number okay so under that technological condition as i was telling so heavy rains followed by you no know, drought for 5 to 6 years or 10 years okay has led to no outbreak trash mulching which is commonly followed in various crops especially sugar cane temperature and humidity regimes in the periods preceding and during the outbreak what all the condition in the last you no know, preceding years so these are all the reason for outbreak of mite non separata okay how about this rainfall and drought acts as a trigger for outbreak so high rainfall possible leads to high humidity and more food okay naturally when there is a moisture okay so there is the availability of vegetation which are very essential for survival and development of larvae prolonged periods of drought following rains may possibly restrict the activity of natural agents you can see what happens so probably these parasites or predators and other natural enemies will maintain the population of this insect to low level but when it actually outbreak no in some years so no no natural enemies can adjust to this type of no very different biological and ecological no growth of this insect lead to okay sudden outbreak because no parasites and predators can adjust to this type of life cycle or this type of ecological conditions that has led to in fact no the outbreak of mite in a separate and other reasons could be distance traveled by migrant population is very high you can see here in case of japan and china so adults have been known to migrate for more than 1500 km okay so some reason some, some regions of you know, place in some places of india or other countries so there may be a trigger and they may migrate and you know, cause outbreak the moths can fly up to 600000 400 km and have been intercepted even over the sea okay that's how it has got you know intercontinental distribution as well so moths are also following air currents depending on the air current they may get carried one of the okay important ecological phenomena which has been understood is that unmated moths live about 100 meter away from the light trap do not respond to it okay what we feel that many times most of the moths are attracted to light traps most of the moths are attracted to light we use that now you know behavior for management but what happens here in this case is here unmated moths okay they do not okay attract to light trap so that is the one of the lacuna drawback in order to use this mechanical device in order to manage the insect so coming to integrated pest management of this you no know, oriental armyworm so cultural control what we can do flowing up all fallow land exposes dormant pupae to dissipation so this is a normal you now practice which is followed worldwide in order to you now bring the stages which are present in the soil to the surface so that you now they may be exposed to high temperature or other natural enemies and you now reduction in the population at this and picking up egg masses and larvae reduces the population okay so they may batches of more than 300 or 400 eggs are laid so such eggs may be collected and destroyed reducing the application of nitrogenous fertilizer lessens the their attack okay succulent growth always attracts insect pests coming to biological control in fact none of these parasites or predators have been okay commercially exploited but various parasites have been naturally identified as a natural parasites okay various hymenopteran parasites parasites in fact dipteran parasites even they may belongs to family tachinids have been identified even npv has been reported but the problem is that so when the sudden outbreak occurs we cannot depend on these type of things okay for managing although natural parasitism has been reported coming to chemical control strategies sprays are more effective than the granules okay you can go for spraying in various crop but the problem is especially in sorghum or maize or sugar cane it is very difficult to go between the rows and spray okay 
So very tough in fact. So various contact insects like copies and synthetic parathrides have been exploited, but the problem you know, with sprays or spraying operation is actually very tough in some of these crops. So under that condition, in fact, now well, now, now important technique which has been well adopted by the farmers is actually poison biting. Okay, how actually it has to be done? So the poison bite is actually made using the about 50 kg of rice bran, or you can use the wheat bran as well. And you need to add about 2 to 3 kg of jaggery along with the required quantity of water. It has to be mixed properly. Okay, it has to be you now left over okay, in an airtight con container for about 24 hours or so. Okay, so rice bran and jaggery, powder of jaggery, in fact, it has to be mixed properly with water and it has to be kept in an airtight container for about 24 hours. And then you have the insects and larvae are actually active during night time. They are nocturnal in fact. So this poison waiting has to be performed during evening hours. Okay, what has to be done? For this fermented material, you need to mix one of the past 50 ml. So it has to be mixed, mixed just before the application, okay, with this bait and it has to be broadcasted in the field. Okay, so larvae get attracted to this poison bait and they get killed. Okay, very important strategy adopted by the farmers and especially it works very well in some of the crops like maize and sugarcane where it's very tough to now go for spraying operations. Okay, before ending, I have a few questions. What is the difference between cut worm and army worm? Definitely, you know, entomologists will be using these terminologies, cut worm, army worm. What are these? What is the difference? How many species of army worms are, have been described around the world? Okay, very few are there, many species are there. What are the ecological factors trigger the outbreak of making mass separate? Of course, we have discussed this. Okay. Okay. So thank you. Thank you very much. If there are any questions, you can post below or you can email me as well. Thank you. Thank you very much.